Should we start again? Did you see all my roots there and everything? So welcome along this morning. We'll edit that bit out later, huh? This is my new fabric panel. Kim was waving at me to say it's on the other head and I'm like this so I couldn't see it because she's over there. That's a good start, isn't it? Here we go. Those are all of your squares with my sketches. And then those are the two panels that you get alongside it as well. So there's so much that you can make with these. It has been busy already, I know. Um, if you want to order, if you haven't seen before, they're on my website, which is debbieshawsewing.com. And they've, they've literally just gone on this morning. Um, so let me tell you a little bit about it. The, everything's made in the UK. So I've done all of the sketches. I'll show you those actually, Whew, when I've picked them up. Um, all my sketches are the kind of things that we see in the countryside around here in Lincolnshire. So I take photos on my phone while I'm out. And I will go overhead now. There's a time and place. So there's these little squirrels. That's a vole. And the fox. We get loads of pheasants as well. Aren't, aren't they silly? And oh, there was a badger, but he's not on there. He didn't, he didn't quite make the final. Um, and hedgehogs and rabbits and one of my favorite newcomers is the weasel and more rabbits and they're cute and we get the barn owls at night and you just see if you're driving at night sometimes you just see them kind of flying in front of the car and I think they are really pretty amazing so I I, I sketch with um, with pencils and then I use a watercolour just to colour them in. And then these are taken to my friend Amy and she's in Derbyshire. And she makes them suitable, shall we say, for digital printing. Um, I'm not that clever. <laughs> so she arranges everything and puts the backgrounds on them. And then the actual fabric is printed in Staffordshire and it's lovely it's 100 percent cotton it's a poplin but it's a really nice weight you know sometimes with kind of craft panels like this the fabrics they can be a bit cheap and and i didn't want that i wanted something of really lovely quality that if you wanted to you could make a little girl's dress um that's substantial enough that you could make a bag you may need some fusible fleece or something like that on the back of it if you want to make a, a really sturdy bag but something that's really lovely to work with as well and color wise it, it's just really pretty isn't it it's not something that's loud and brash and stands out or argues with anything else in your in your color palette um or in your stash it's just really soft and and lovely i'm so pleased honestly because this is a venture all on all on my own or all me and kim um because we work together and um seeing it through from start all the way through to the finish and Gosh, when, when the roll arrived um, a week or so ago, actually it was all inside out and it arrived and I thought, oh, all of the colours are really washed out, it's going to be horrible. And when I turned it over and I felt the fabric, I was, I was just so, so pleased with it. I hope you will be as well. Um, I'm just going to say a few hellos. Um, morning to Mary and Vanessa. I'm glad you got your order. And uh, Julie, hello, and Janet. And Ka hi, Carol. I'm all over the place, aren't I? Carol was asking this morning, was it going to be on TV or YouTube? Isn't that on Facebook or YouTube the other day? No plans for TV. Um, good afternoon, Christine. Oh, are you afternoon over there? Bonjour. And uh, Caroline and Pat, I'm glad you like it. And uh, Kirsty, you've ordered yours. Thank you. Um, hopefully, yeah, I, I wanted it to be British, um, Mary. And, and not just because, you know, if you carbon footprint and all of that kind of thing um, and keeping things in the country it's speed as well you tend to find if you're buying things from China and they come over on a boat they take weeks if not months um, so I wanted it to be quite quick because once I decided I was going to do this I was, I'm really impatient I want it tomorrow um, I actually sent all of the designs over to the the fabric printers before Christmas and then they took a break for Christmas and I wanted to get the panels to you that's so inconsiderate um, hi Linda and uh, Denise from Kent and Julie from Portugal. Now, if you want to order a broad, um, on my website, there's, it's UK only because it is quite expensive. 
um, but I've had a few of you already asking for quotes to different countries and it's around about £10.55 on average. Um, it was yeah it was eight pounds something to go to um belgium and i had a quote to florida at 10 pound 55 and another one to canada at 10 pounds 55 so send me a message but can you send me a message quite quickly because i'll need to put them to one side before um i sell out because i don't know if i can afford to get any more done at the moment okay um so this is how they're going to come to you i know they're boxed the tissue papered you've got um, no instructions to make anything because you make whatever you like with it but there's an inspiration sheet in there as well and you're even going to have a bunny sticker on the back when you post it out and to give you some ideas from one panel I made the cushion cover um, granted I've mixed with other fabrics as well because I wanted to stretch this as far as I could so that's just using five of the squares I also made the little weasel makeup bag that's all from the same panel again we're just using a, a coordinating fabric I then made a tote bag so that's using the large square as you can see on the front all of the fabrics the handles are made out of the panels as well and four of those on the back um, so you could make that stretch even further if you do if you use some of your own fabric and you made up made one of the sides plain and then I had some of the rabbit print fabric left over so I did a little bit of English paper piecing and made a hexagon pin cushion and I'd still got a few little scraps left as well that I could do some more EPP with if I wanted to. So we're going to make um, a child's apron this time. Um, before we do though I've got some other things new on the website that I wanted to show you. Do you remember the first time, um, do you remember our first time? Do you remember the first time I brought you the grace bag and we'd be sold out and uh, then we I brought you the Indian fabrics, the, the silks from, from Delhi, sold out. And then um, there was the floral and check one, the mustard coloured, I think we've got one left. And now we have the blues. So if you haven't seen these before, I've got a, a bit of padding in there for photography purposes. These are reversible. So all you need to do is unscrew the bits at the side. They, oh, they can be a little bit stiff. When you first get the frames home, you may need to just use a pair of pliers. But let me just take these off and show you how it works. Oh, I think I might have lost a screw. You get the idea. So I'll take the frame off. So that's how it comes to you. Let me go overhead again. Hi Angela, glad you like them. So that's what the frame looks like. And then I have, I've dropped a screw. Oh, how silly. Let's see if it's in the bag. Nope. Um, and then when you make the bag up, be very, very careful with your hand sewing. I think that's mine across the bottom. Keep it nice and neat. And then you can turn it the other way out. So you've kind of got daytime and nighttime in the same fabric, in the same bag. The fabric is in the kit. You've got some fusible fleece in the kit. That'll be um, H640 Valiseline. And the frame and your instructions. And then we'll take this back through the frame. There's a channel at the side here. You need to thread that through. And then just slide that through to the other side. Try and keep the frame poked inside the bag. Then it goes through the other side here. And I'm just gonna squeeze that frame a little bit so I can get the screw on. And that's that. And then when I found the other nut that goes on the end of here, that goes on the other side as well. Now, something else that I've got for you because you asked, 
our chain handles now these these are very long oh there it was <laughs> and these will fit beautifully with your grace uh, they just clip on the side like so and you've got a nice long handle um, if it's a bit too long it's quite on trend don't you know to just tie a knot on the shoulder so it's it's kind of like that and oh i'll tell you what I'll tell you what else we've got uh, i've got <coughs> oh excuse me i've got some shorter chains as well which are a little bit bulky for this one I'll leave that. but these would make a nice wristlet i've also got some <coughs> really big one inch clasps there's one inch d-rings on there as well these are swivel snaps so if you're making um maybe a, a larger bag a tote bag or a duffel bag or something like that you can use those those are all new and then finally to show you are these this is a little disc it's got a magnet so that hook when it wraps around snaps in place on this side it's rubbery so it's got a little bit of grip have you guessed what it is yet so when you're going out for dinner and you don't want to put your handbag on the floor that clips on the table and it holds your handbag how clever is that i have a friend i shan't mention her name who always goes for very posh handbags and i have heard her order an extra chair for the louis when she's been out for dinner don't need an extra chair for your grace bag or any other bag that just clips onto the side I and mean, it's, it's just so sweet because it just kind of wraps up and fits in the palm of your hand so it'll fit in your handbag and then it's always there when you want to take it out and hook your bag on it clever idea isn't it right okay we'll get some sewing done in a second let's see who wants to see hi sarah and uh and Gemma and iona and beverly and janice and thank you um francis oh janice again oh one more oh no different janice um Gemma's bought four of my books thank you very much um oh ronnie's got a cough oh i'm sorry ronnie so i want the quilt banner oh oh gosh there's lots of you here this morning oh how lovely so what, what are your plans for the day uh, Veronica's in the middle of a field waiting for our guns to stand on their posts so we can start the drive. Are you shooting stuff? I don't know if I approve. Um, order three chain handles please Debbie. Angie, go to the website. It is uh, debbieshawsewing.com um, Oh, Claire, and oh gosh, um, it might be a while. I want, to, I want to see who's here before we carry on. Hi, Lorraine. Hi, Jenny. <laughs> You're going to get sick of me in your house, Jenny. Jenny's on holiday. Are you on holiday still? You're in Lanzarote, weren't you? Hmm. Uh, she gets around a bit, Jenny does. Yeah. Um, hi, Karen and Gemma. All oh, right, we're up to date. Gemma's making her son a taggy blanket today. That's lovely. I made a, I made a taggy blanket. For, um, no, not a blanket, one of those that you, like a little thing um, for, uh, for Vienna, for Kim's daughter. And I used all labels out of clothes because you know when you've, you've got a label in something, they just like to play with them, don't they? So I, it was a great excuse to go shopping. And I, I took all of the labels out and I put them all at the tags around the edge of the, um, uh, the blanket. And I've got coffee. Okay, let's get sewing. So, um, I want this to fit perfectly. So I have measured Vienna. And I've got a, a plan as to what I'm going to do. So she's not here at the moment and she, she wouldn't come anyway. So I measured across the front of the chest here and she was six inches it will be taken down by half an inch because we've got a seam allowance and then i measured around the waist just the front of the waist and the distance from the top here down to the waist and then all the way down to the bottom as well i'm just going to interrupt myself 
Um, Tim says we're getting lots of messages saying that they'd like to buy the panel. Can't buy it on Facebook. I don't have a Facebook shop. It's my website. So it's www.debbyshawsewing.com. And when you go onto the site, um, if you th there's all the different sections with different fabrics and tools and books and things like that. Go onto the set, on, onto the shop, and then go onto Debbie Shaw, and it'll come up with my fabrics and it'll come up with the panel there as well. Okay, they are twenty five pounds um, plus your shipping, and again they all come nicely boxed and pack packaged, and they make a lovely gift. And they're, they're really oh, I didn't show the quilt, did I? I will. I'll get around to the apron in a second. If you just use this just as it is, just like that. You can make this. <coughs> no, I shouldn't have had the <coughs> excuse me, had the coffee with me. So that's using practically all of it. I think I had about um, two or three strips of the border fabric. So all I've done is literally cut the um, the two borders into two and three quarter length strips, and that used all of it up because they're eleven inches wide. And then with this, I've just um, stitched. It looks, it looks like stitching in the ditch, but there isn't a ditch there. So I've just sewn around each one of the squares and echo quilted the bit in the centre there as well. So I have used my own white fabric on the back and it's got a coffee bean stuck in my throat. Um, and I did use some white bias binding. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, simply because I didn't want, I wanted these borders to be quite big and if I bound it with the same then the, all, all of this fabric would be gone in binding. But that's a nice size isn't it? And it's so easy to do. So if you're a complete novice and a beginner sewer and you wanted to do a little bit of quilting, it looks like, um, well I think it looks a lot more complicated than it is because it looks like the pieces are all pieced together and they're not, that's just the panel. So again it's uh, debbieshawsewing.com if you'd like to pop over there. Um, I'm not sure when they've gone if I'm going to be able to get any back hopefully um, but I don't know when it'll be what am I doing okay so measurements so back to work so it's gonna be quite a simple apron so those are my measurements so it was six inches across the top that's under the neckline and then I want it uh, 12 inches across the middle here so that was six inches, that was 12 inches. If you make them on the same size, my granddaughter is a very tall two-year-old, so I'd say it's around about three or four-year-old. The distance there was seven inches, and the whole length was 15 inches. So I'm going to make that shape a pinny. And I'm going to use ribbons for ties. I, I was thinking about making the straps out of my panel, but I want to keep my, uh, my panel for, um, for other projects, make it last a little bit longer. Um, oh, and I'm going to put two pockets on the front here. And those are going to have the animals on. So the first thing I need to do is to measure my apron. We're starting this right from scratch. So I haven't done any preparation apart from measuring. Normally I'd have this at my cutting table with my mat, but this little table that I'm on here isn't big enough. So I'll, I'll do it with, uh, with the scissors. So 15 inches in length is what I need to cut. And I think I'd like it with more rabbits at the bottom. So it's not halfway, my 15 inches is here but I don't want it to sit halfway so it's the same at the top at the bottom. I think I'd like more at the bottom than at the top. And I think I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. I think that'd be quite nice. Or I measured seven inches down to the waist, didn't I? So I could have this at the waist. No, I'm going to go, I'm going to go all the way down. Uh, to be honest, if I go all the way down to the bottom here, I'm not wasting so much fabric. If I was to make this a little bit shorter, there's my 15 inches, I probably wouldn't use that two inches at the bottom and that's, that's a bit of a waste, that'd be a shame. So we'll do that. So I'm going to mark where 15 inches is here and I'm just using an erasable ink pen 
not that you're going to see any of the lines because they'll all be within seam allowances and then I'm using my ruler I'm going to go 12 inches across because that was the widest part and I'm just going to use the line of the join because that is really straight as a guide here so I'm cutting straight and I need to go 12 inches across which is here and then down the other side you could quite easily make an adult size waist apron out of this there, there is a lot of fabric there okay so there's my make it square 15 inches down there you can hear the quality can't you that sounds fab fabulous it's not scratchy it's really smooth it's lovely fabric all right then we'll cut this out and again it could be would be a lot easier with my rotary cutter I'm just making sure I get the line straight I am going to put a lining on it and I'm just going to use white fabric for the lining so I'm not wasting any more of my panel and then down this side now I'll just, I'll just warn you um, I am at home and my little sewing studio is at the front of the house so I'm right next to the front door where the postman comes to and Bobbin was terribly excited this morning and um, we shut her out because she was barking a lot and she's actually scratching at the door to come in so just say so you no know, we're live today this morning from home no soundproofing like you get in studios so these things happen so just cutting off the selvage okay then I'm going to fold this in half now I wanted um, six inches across the top which means that's three inches from either side which is here and then seven inches down from there that's where the waist was and then I'm going to draw a line from the waist to the top of the bib and cut and even these little bits that I'm cutting off I could use for my English paper piecing if I've got some small hexagons maybe so I'm not going to throw those away and there's the shape of my little apron <laughs> it's cute isn't it I love the rabbits if I say so myself um, right so I need pockets on the do you know it's not I'd, I'd be cutting into them wouldn't I to make the pockets let's just put one pocket on the front and let's make it let's make it as oh no should we do the right let's do the rabbit we'll have a rabbit pocket there's two rabbits on there so make if I was making a bigger apron then I could put um, the two rabbits on there but they would, would kind of take over because they're so big so we'll have one in the middle there we go and there's room on there as well actually if I did want to make smaller pockets I could turn to cut it down a little bit I don't like wasting things though right so I've still got most of my panel left so that is going to go right on the front just there <laughs> so sweet oh, oh I hope she's watching um, so I need to cut out um, some lining so that's what I've got left so of this side you could easily make a couple and then you've still got most of the panels left there as well it goes a long way right so where's my white fabric gone right so I'll need some lining for the pocket and then lining for the actual apron 
and again I normally do this with the rotary cutter so bear with me with my scissors so I'm just going to use that as a template and cut around it there we go and say good morning to the scene Gemma. oh Dawn hello and Joe. thank you and Susan and Jenny's in the hotel reception watching but it's a posh one. marble floors um, hi Janet and Linda just purchased the panel oh thank you might need to order something else can I add it or do I need a new order um, if you wanted to order something else it, it will automatically come up on the website as another order with another postage um, but now you've pointed that out Linda if you order anything else I'll knock the postage off it um, I'll have to refund it to you I think it's only a little website we're, we're not I can't do a sewing quarter and add it all up and post them out at midnight um, but yeah if you if you do a new order then I will refund the postage for you hope that's okay Pat's ordered a panel what are you gonna make and she's going to make a rosemary bag oh a rosemary bag with the panel that'd be nice wouldn't it oh and the gray you could make a grace with the panel as well wouldn't that be lovely so you could have the rabbits on the one side and then the, the these are um, they're just berries I've got the photo on my phone actually um, I don't know what they are but they were all over the hedgerow last year when I was walking the dog um, but I, I think that on one side and the rabbits on the other side would make a lovely reversible bag um, Anne loves the quilt thank you thank you Nicola and Christine um, Gemma's not made a blanket before so easy honestly I uh, can't order from Ireland now it's one of those uh, expensive postage outside the UK um, is it myriad 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 um, if you send me a message can we, can we put one by Kim for myriad you want to, oh three okay uh, we'll put them by and we'll get you a coat okay so she's on it see so yeah, I'm, I'm way behind with the with my messages and you're already replying to them she's just sorted may as well not bother <laughs> <clears throat> oh look at that you're having the right conversation between the two of you <laughs> uh, Heather's making curtains for the sitting room right I'm, I'm up to date with everybody I think right let's get let's get back to sewing going overhead again right <clears throat> so literally just cutting around the edge like so <laughs> we picked um, Vienna up from nursery yesterday I picked her up from nursery and um, they were just finishing off their tea and they were sat on these um, tiny little chairs like they do and uh, they're, they're just having a drink they'd had tomato soup and bread and all the kids were wearing little aprons like this that's why I thought that'd be nice to have at home so she was really clean because she got her apron here but she got tomato soup on her shoulders <laughs> I know you can get aprons with sleeves in but <laughs> I don't know why she managed that okay again with, with a rotary cutter and ruler this is a lot simpler accurate and quicker so that's that bit and then I'll do the same around the pocket as well see I can, on, a, on a, um, a large apron maybe making one for yourself I'd do a little half apron and then use you know the, the four little birds across the top or across the bottom Look what I did. Look, I'm cutting, I know, cut the rabbit. Um, but I'd use all four of those in one strip and then put your lining fabric on it and just sew in between them so you've got four pockets all in a row. Just a thought. Okay. That's Bobbin scratching if you can hear stuff. And it looks like a lovely day outside here today, so we'll go for a nice long walk in a bit although it's still so muddy around the woods and she's not a fan of having a bath there we go 
we'll get some sewing done in a second right so before I sew everything together I need to cut some ribbon for the ties um, I'm going to make them longer than need be because I want to try this on her to get the straps the right length so if, if you have your child with you you could make one loop that goes around the neck um, so I'd pin it in place very carefully when you try it on your child and pop that over the head and just make sure it'll go over the head um, I'm going to put two straps on there to make a bow at the back because I'm not sure um, or you could do one long strap and make a small loop at this side with two D-rings on it and then you just thread this through the D-rings and you can make it adjustable but I'm just going to have these as a tie and these need to go on facing downwards just to the outside and we'll say oh we need the pocket on I'll do the pocket first look at me it's almost like I'm in my own sewing room just making it up as I go along two neckties two waist ties one pocket so we'll, oops, we'll tidy that out of the way and we'll sew the pocket pieces right sides together I know I'm going to lose some of the border around the edge but I'm going to leave a little bit of the border at the top and I'm going to sew all the way around but leave a gap in the base so I can turn it the right side out so I'm literally sewing on the edge and you can just about see where the print comes through and I'm sewing on the edge of the square until I get to the top then I've left that bit of a border and then we'll come across the top and then down the other side of the white part of the square and then back across the bottom remember I'm leaving a gap so now we'll cut off the corners so we can make the points a bit more pointy and we'll turn it the right side out so let's just pull these through i'm just looking in my drawer so bear with me a second see if i've got oh yes something pointy ish to push the corners out like so these would look nice on a, a child's dress as well wouldn't they I'm thinking a big skirt with big patch pockets on the front would look lovely right then let's give that an iron So I have got some of these um, prim irons left on the website as well. Those, those are always really popular because it is a nice little iron. It's, it does have steam. I haven't got water in mine, um, but it's a nice travel iron. But for, when you sit in sewing like this, um, my iron isn't in this room. I have, have, to, have to walk to another room to the iron, I know. So this is a lot more convenient, but it is great for traveling as well. So that's looking good there. So this is going to go right in the centre. So I've already got a crease line for where I folded that, but I'll just recrease. And I'm going to fold my pocket in half as well and just crease. And then I know when I line the creases up, should we do that? Or should we do that? That or that? Let's do that line the creases up and I know that is perfectly in the center and then we'll have a few pins and then I'm going to sew backwards and forwards a couple of times at the top here to strengthen the pocket and all the way around when I sew across the bottom that's going to close that turning gap so I didn't have to close that by hand 
lost my foot pedal. So backwards and forwards a few times to secure and sew all the way around the edge and I'm just sewing about an eighth of an inch from the from the edge of the pocket. If my machine sounds noisy, I had a, a comment on one of my live streams that that machine is very noisy. Um, it's because the microphone is so close to it. It's not actually that noisy. Okay, backwards and forwards. Chop off my thread. This is so cute. So now we'll put the straps on. So, I'll leave my pins again. Facing inwards, I'm going to sew. Let's go up to the top again. And sew this facing inwards here. Um, not right up to the edge because you've got a seam allowance. I'm going to leave a quarter of an inch. So, the strap I'm going to have a quarter of an inch from the edge. And I'm going to point them facing in a little bit. So, oh no, let me think. There's a way of doing that. So if they face in that way, that's it. It's very tempting to put the strap on like that when you want it to an angle and sew, but then when you fold it back, it's it's gone right over the shoulder. You've got an off the shoulder apron. So if it points that way, then when you fold it back, it's going towards the center, which is where we want it. So at around about a 45 degree angle, a quarter of an inch from the edge, we'll have that one. And the same from this side facing in the opposite direction. Do you know, I'm paranoid about getting that wrong. Okay, so that's going in there. And then the waist ties are going to go again facing in at the side. Like so. Right, so I'm going to sew those in place first, purely so that I can take the pins out when I'm putting the lining in. So that's just a row of stitches within the seam allowance. I'm not sewing over pins, I don't do that. Some people don't mind, I, I do. Um, I've only, I did actually break a needle hitting a pin um, not so long ago, it was obviously by accident. Um, and it's, it's not so much the, the breaking of the needle that's the problem, it's where the end of the needle is going to go or where the sharp end of the pin is going to go if it flies off. So don't, don't do that. Right, let's chop off the end bits of the ribbon so we're doing that then we'll put the lining in so I'm going to put all the ribbons into the middle away from the edge because I don't want to sew over them then take my lining piece which is on the floor and place that right sides down and I'm going to pin around it when I've said hello to you um, Claire, oh, claire has got twin boys due any day now. Oh, okay. Thank you, Wendy. I haven't got a front garden. Um, hi, Carol and Tracy and Angie and Carol. Oh, thank you. It's lovely to hear from you all this morning. I'm not sure what, um, what time to be here or what day to be here but um because I'm, I'm i'm trying I'm, I'm aiming for every week so let me know would you prefer sewing on a saturday or sewing on a sunday and i might be here or i might be on youtube who knows um but i'll let you know but i, I think a, a regular time would be good i don't think i'll, I'll be able to make every single week you know what 100% because I do have other things to, to going on 
but um, I do think a regular a regular slot would be good, wouldn't it? So yeah, post below. Let me know when's the best time for you. I can't accommodate everybody, but I'll certainly try for the majority. How's that? Okay, a couple more pins there, and I am going to sew all the way around the edge, just like I did with the pocket, and leave a gap in the bottom. You go out of the way, just making sure I don't sew over those ribbons as well. Yeah, English paper piecing, that's what I did the, um, the little um, pin cushion with. I make such a mess, you know, I don't even know where I put it. I'll try and find it later and show you, but it's, it's great for English paper piecing because the, the sizes are quite small. You can imagine cutting out all, all the rabbits, let me show you the panel again, um, cutting out all of those rabbits and putting them all back together again with English paper piecing, wouldn't that be lovely? Um, and then maybe mixing them with, if you've got like hexagons, you could have um, a plain white in the middle and then do all the petals with, um, with the rabbit in them. I think that, and that is again, stretch the fabric, make it go a bit further, wouldn't it? I think that'd be fabulous. Okay, let's sew around here. So I do have some other things coming up, um, which I shall show you in just a second. I've got some more fabric panels in the pipeline as well, um, but that will be sewing machine based, not the not the animal. So it has a, a bit of a different look. But there's some some great fabrics for making things for your sewing room coming up. Um, Half Yard Sewing Club is so busy at the moment. There's so many of you joined over the last few weeks. Um, so that's keeping them very busy as well. Oh, and I might, I might be popping up on Ideal World with something completely different. Nothing to do with sewing, that's, that's interesting. Kind of going back to my roots a little bit. Right, almost there. Down to the bottom. And across. Nice project for um, a beginner sewer this one as well I think. Um, aprons are, well you can, you can go really over the top with them and have the, the frills and flounces and, and make them more fitted and retro or anything like that. Um, but a simple apron like this is going to fit because there's no dots in there. There's You don't have to um, you know, put any closures or zips or anything like that. It's really easy because it's not a dress. It's only going to wrap around, so it, it's going to fit even if you know you've got a child that grows. If you've got a child that grows, <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's a really easy project, and it's it's a nice gift idea as well. Oh, Easter bunnies! You could make you could make Easter aprons. Right, so we're turning this the right side out. We're almost finished. Not by going, is it? And that was completely from scratch, remember? I'll just poke out those side bits, then I'm going to iron it again. And then I'll show you what's coming up next. It's been ever so busy for these panels. Thank, thank you so much. I'm glad you like them. It's always a bit um, kind of nerve wracking when you when you've designed something right from scratch and and you love it so much yourself and you put so much effort into it and so much time and so much money to be honest. Um, when when I show you things like this for the first time, back in my mind, I just think, oh, what if nobody likes it? But from what I'm hearing. About half of all the stocks sold out. So you do like it, it's quite a relief. I love it. And it's it's just I don't it's so exciting when you see your images come to life like this. It's, it really gives me a buzz. Right. 
so I'm, I'm folding in the seam allowance in the gap at the bottom put a bit of lace across the top of the pocket that would be nice and I'm just pressing around the edge of the seam but I am going to top stitch that as well I need to poke out that corner with my pokey thing which is up oh, excuse me while I pick up my pokey thing that'll do so I think we're finished with you so I'm just going to top stitch around the edge given more time I'd probably use the same color thread the, this lovely minty green color and, uh, and top stitch so I'm going to make my stitches a little bit longer so I'm going up to 2.8 and I'm just sewing again about an eighth of an inch from the edge and that's going to keep the edge of the apron nice and crisp um, 30 degree wash for the fabric and uh, oops you love the quality of it when you get it home to be honest when we because we, we get swatches from the fabric printers um, of all of the different weights of fabric and the first one that came through oh it's gorgeous it was really expensive um, but it was like a heavy satin finish um, and I said to Kim right that's it that's the one that we're having um, because it was so lovely and then we decided actually it's too heavy so you wouldn't be able to quilt with it you wouldn't be able to dress make with it make amazing bags but it was just too heavy so we did do a little bit of um, backwards and forwards when selecting the quality of the fabric but I'm absolutely over the moon with this one seriously I, I think you'll love it it's not scratchy it's got a really tight weave so you can barely see the weave of the, um, of the fabric this gives it a really nice smoothness I shall show you overhead what I've done. And then my granddaughter's too shy to come and model it, so I'll put it on the mannequin and we'll see what we look like. <clears throat> so that's it done. I know the straps are going to be too long, but again, I'll, I'll cut those down. I'll just trim the edge of the thread off there. And that's finished. <clears throat> apart from the start oh they're really long so that's the back so it's all nicely lined so it's got a nice weight to it that's the front and there's my pocket so let's bring you over he hasn't got a name I'll say he it hasn't got a name come over here that's it so that ties around the waist this is about the size of my granddaughter like so oh like that and these two go around the neck like so do you know in hindsight i wouldn't have put those at an angle I told you i was making it up as i went along because the width of that means that they need to be straight should have tried it on first shouldn't I well there you go at least I'm being honest so that's what it's looking like so that is a very simple apron that you could quite easily make well I've made that in an hour from scratch um, and taken into account it took me what five minutes to measure my granddaughter then you, you could easily make that in an hour and that's using very little of your panel so let me just give you a reminder before you go or before I go and then I'll tell you what I'm doing next week I don't know what's happened to that little pink cush oh there it is do you know I need um, I need one of those like a big console table don't I so everything so I can just spin around and pick things up so I don't have to put things on the floor <laughs> so there's your panel I'll show you overhead so you can have a good old look at the um, my sketches so there in the center you've got the two rabbits 
So those are new characters. You won't have seen those on any of the sewing quarter panels that I did. Um, the weasels are new. And you may have seen the blackbird before. Your fox is new. There's a barn owl. He's new. Another new weasel. You've got a new colour of the hedgehog. That's a vole. There's your rabbit again. And then we've got the squirrels and the um, the pheasant. And they're all kind of facing in the, the right direction as well. So everyone's facing towards the middle, which is quite nice. So that's one half. It's not even half. The majority of your fabric is printed fabric. So you can use these for whatever you like. So that could be a border, it could be a little girl's skirt, if you put some, maybe some elastic around the top there. Um, cushion covers, homewares would be absolutely lovely. Um, if you're just using the squares, I only used one square to make this makeup bag. I've used boastful foam in there so it's, it's nice and, um, and firm. Um, and I've just stitched around the edge. I like boastful foam to quilt through because it gives a really nice texture. And I've just used my own fabric on the back. My scraps that were left over when we talked about English paper piecing earlier on, these are English paper pieced pieces. Um, and I've just used all of the rabbits, all of my leftover rabbits. So this and this and the bag, Again, that, that's using all of the fabrics apart from for the lining. I've used a plain lining. So I've cut into those longer strips to make the, the sashing in between those four panels. And I've used the large one on the back there as well. And all of those pieces, including the cushion cover, which is, oh, bear with me, here was all made from one panel. There was very little left after making all of these. Um, that's why I was using the scraps to do the English paper piecing. But all of that from one panel. Or if you just wanted to use the panel on its own, that's, that's not the right way up. That's the size of the quilt you're going to be able to make. You can make that go even further if you cut out the um, all of the squares and put some plain fabric sashing in between. You could probably make something twice the size. You may need some extra for the borders. Um, the, the fabric panels at the side were probably about that much long. That's how much I got left, which again, I can save for some English paper piecing. So that's my panel. This may be the last time you see it. It's been really busy this morning on my website. If you do want to order one, it's um, debbieshawsewing.com. So it's not a Facebook shop, um, but I'm, I'm sure Kim's put on, on there somewhere um, the website address. So if you do want one, then pop over there and order. Um, right, let's have a look at some more of your comments and I'll tell you what's coming up next week. Um, Saturday evening. What about when I go to the discotheque on a Saturday night and have a Bacardi Breezer? Those days are long gone. Um, oh, thank you, El. Uh, Els, I'm glad you like the fabric. Uh, Saturday. It's late in Tassie. <laughs> sewing on a Saturday. Yeah, there's a lot of sewing on TV on a Sunday, isn't there? Maybe I'll um, maybe I'll stick to a Saturday. Um, more panels. They're, I love panels, aren't they such a good idea? I know they're quite new, like a, a, a new concept, but um, it just makes things so easy. I, I'm going to be working on some bag panels as well. So literally you cut out the shape of the bag and sew it together without any patterns or anything. So got lots of ideas. It's just that I need to sew some more days in the week, I think. Um, hello from Perth. Oh, wow. Hello. Um, and more in the pipeline with this morning. Do you know, this morning got in touch with me uh, about a month ago asking for my availability. Um, so I told them. And, and that was that. Um, but they keep saying to, uh, they, they don't do an awful lot of crafting and the, the two shows that I have done for them haven't been sewing or very much sewing um, because they wanted to do more general crafting than sewing. Um, 
but they don't do an awful lot on there. And I think the, the girl that I deal with is really struggling to, to make the point that people really do want to see crafting on this morning, even if it's short bursts. So I'm just told I, I have to keep them up to date with my availability and keep coming up with ideas for them. So I thought the next topical thing they're going to be working on will probably be Valentine's. So I sent them a whole load of ideas for Valentine's Day. And again, the department that I deal with um, are on holiday till the 15th. So hopefully I'll have some news when they get back off their extended Christmas break next week. Um, love going down there. They're, they're, they're such nice people. I have a really nice time. Oh yeah, we need a picture of Vienna wearing the apron. I need to fix those straps, shouldn't it? Didn't Just being clever didn't work. Um, how do we buy the panel? DebbieShawSewing.com Oh hi Alex. Holiday sewing widow. If Jenny isn't watching you, she's quilting. <laughs> you have to keep her happy. She's special. Um, oh, that, that mini iron is brilliant. Just uh, Shelley's ordered her panels. Thank you. Pre-washing. Now, if you're um, if you're making a dress, then um, I would pre-wash. To be honest, most fabrics these days don't need pre-washing, um, but it is 100% cotton. So for your peace of mind, maybe you'd want to pre-wash. Uh, and that's if you're making a dress or if you're making a quilt or something that's going to be laundered quite a lot. If you're making bags and pincushions and things that you can spot clean, these aren't going to go into the washing machine. I'd never pre-wash fabric that I'm making craft items out of or bags out of. Um, if you're, um, but if you're concerned, then yeah, pre-wash. It's not going to hurt. Do a, a thirty degree, or or if you if you're not patient enough to pre-wash, if you give the fabric a real blast of hot steam, you know, and I'm telling you to be careful when you wash it thirty degrees, but try, um, the hot steam can pre-shrink any fabric without it going through the wash. So that's a, that's a thought. T test a little bit first. Um, although I have hot steamed everything that I've made, so uh, you'll be fine. Uh, where did you get a child mannequin from? They are actually really expensive. They have them on Amazon. Um, I've got quite a few of them because I need them, but yeah, I got Amazon. Um, oh, thanks, Vanessa. Um, I always see the badger at some point. Did you <laughs> I didn't realize I got the badger in here. But yes, I, I don't know whether, excuse the top of my head, I've got my, my my floor space that I like to store things in. Oh, come here. Oh, do you know, this looks so professional, doesn't it? It's a good job we're not TV. Let me show you. My little badger. He's cute, isn't he? Maybe, maybe we should. Maybe we should do badgers. We see quite a lot. These are all animals that I see in the um, in the hedgerows, in the woodland, where I walk bobbing every day. Um, so the owls and the weasels and the, the little rabbits. It's another weasel. Um, when we first moved here, we've been here for, oh gosh, I don't know, about six years now. Um, I was driving into um, Stamford, which is our nearest town, um, at night. I was going to pick my son up from work. And I'd got the windows open, it was summer, um, so it's quite warm outside and I could hear rustling as I was driving, so I actually slowed down and stopped. And the rustling was two badger pups playing. Oh, I've never seen anything like it. They were rolling, they were like puppies. They were, they were having such a good time and I just stopped the car and sat and watched them with a silly big grin on my face. Um, never seen anything quite like that. But yeah, we get a lot of badgers, we get a lot of foxes, um, we get rabbits. You've probably seen my hair panels already um, or before. They get a lot of hairs there. They're amazing, they're so big. Um, I don't know how I got into all of that. But yeah, badgers, yes. Let's, let's, in, let's include badgers in, the, in something or other. Um, Saturday from Cape. We'll do a Saturday then. Good morning from Canada. Hello, £10.55 to ship to Canada. <laughs> um, Susan's in Dartmouth. She loves the videos. Oh gosh, there are a lot of you here. Oh, Vanessa's nickname. Oh, is it, her other half's nickname is Badger. <laughs> it's a lorry driver. My dad was a lorry driver. Uh, right, next. So next Saturday. Let's do next Saturday at 11 o'clock. And I've got something new for you. I did tease you with some pictures of this. But the kits are all made up now. So I shall be making one next week and showing you how to pattern match as well because I think with the tree fabric it looks amazing when you match the patterns like that. 
So this is going to be a kit. You'll have the, the fabric's really wide. It's 150 centimeters wide, and I haven't have had it cut into the exact amount you need for the bags. It's 150 centimeters wide, so you can imagine you're going to have a big long strip like this. You've got plenty of both fabrics left over um, to make um, matching purse or a smaller matching bag. The lining fabric is included. That's um, a natural seeded cotton, so it matches really well with the fabric. This clasp is included. It's a huge one and it's in gunmetal grey and you get these really big hooks as well to put your straps on. The only thing I don't put in here which you're going to need is your stabiliser. So this one's using the H640 Vilizeline. The one I'm going to make next week I'm going to use Bosal Foam so it's going to be a little bit firmer. Um, so there's the instructions, your clasp, your snaps, your fabrics, your top and your bottom fabric and your lining fabric and I've sewn, this is hand sewn in and I've used embroidery thread, you're going to get embroidery thread as well, not just enough to do to sew this in, you're going to get the whole skein. And you've got choices as well, so if trees don't do it for you, how about flowers? So those are your two choices, this one is using Bosal foam but you choose that. Um, it, to, to be honest it keeps the cost right down because Bosal tends to be very expensive maybe you've got some at home already and you don't want it in the kit because you've already got some or you prefer to use a fusible fleece that's entirely up to you so that's the floral the other one with the trees that's enough teasing that's 11 o'clock next Saturday we'll be bringing those um, okay I've been here for an hour better go um, so I think I've said hello to everybody oh flowers Elizabeth I know they're lovely um, if you're watching after the event, so uh, we're not live because I'm going in a minute, um, but please do leave your comments still because I keep looking at the comments just to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm answering everybody. Um, Saturday morning seems to be the consensus for a regular uh, little live sewing slot, so I should do my best to do that every single week. I will be doing some more YouTube lives as well. Um, not sure when at the moment, need to figure out what I'm going to do for those and when's the best time, so I'm not doing it at this. You can apparently do live YouTube and Facebook at the same time, but I can't figure it out. So if you've got any advice, if you've done it yourself, then uh, then do let me know. So I hope you've enjoyed this last hour. And I, I'm, I'm so pleased that, well, so many of you have, have loved the panel so much and you've joined me and you've commented. It's made it a really special morning. Thank you very much. I shall see you again next Saturday at 11 o'clock with those bags. If you wanted to order anything off the website, but particularly those panels, because I know, I know we don't have very many left now, um, it's all the W's, DebbieShawSewing.com. I shall see you again right here next week. Bye-bye.